हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई डॉक्टर युक्ति शर्मा फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एजुकेशन यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली विल बी डिस्कसिंग विद यू इंडक्टिव एंड डिडक्टिव अप्रोच इन साइंस डियर फ्रेंड्स वी ऑल आर टीचर्स एंड एज अ टीचर वी आर अवेयर ऑफ वेरियस टीचिंग अप्रोचेज एंड मेथड्स इन साइंस देर आर डिफरेंट अप्रोचेज इन टीचिंग साइंस दैट इन्फ्लुएंस द वे वी डिस्कस अ टॉपिक द रोल ऑफ टीचर्स इन द क्लास एंड द रोल ऑफ लर्नर्स इन द क्लास टूडे वी विल डिस्कस two kinds of such approaches but before discussing that we would like to discuss why approaches to science teaching are crucial one is that the science teaching approaches equip teachers with the various ways in which they can engage with their learners in a science class that is how are they going to begin the lesson how are they going to progress in the lesson and how are they going to end or culminate the lesson it also helps to understand the teachers their role in the science classroom such as if suppose a teacher starts with introducing a concept and explaining the concept the role of the teacher becomes as that of somebody who is giving an explanation and explaining everything to the learners but on the other hand if the teacher gives lots of examples and let the learner to discover the concept from the examples the role of the teacher becomes that of a facilitator so as per the kind of approach the teacher visualizes his or her role in the science classroom similarly it also helps the teacher to understand what would be the role of a learner in the science classroom as you just saw in the given example that if the teacher starts with an explanation the learner is at the receiving end and the learner receives what the teacher is explaining and tries to understand but on the other hand if the teacher gives lots of examples and gives an opportunity to the learner to discover the concept itself in that case the learner's role becomes that of a explorer of a discoverer which is much more than simply understanding a concept another important point is it also helps the teacher to plan the lesson for a science class a class is generally you know of 40 minutes or 30 minutes whatever the span of the class is but the teacher is supposed to divide the class into an introduction into there is a body of the lesson plan and then the way the teacher is going to conclude the lesson so how the teacher is going to introduce a concept whether the teacher is going to name the concept in the beginning or the teacher expects that the learner will come to the concept over a period of time these decisions have to be taken according to the approaches that teacher selects or chooses last but not the least point is that as we were just discussing the teacher has to take certain decisions regarding the introduction or the culmination and conclusion of the lesson for that again the teacher has to look which approach am i following for this particular topic if i am following an approach where the learner has to discover then obviously in the introduction will not have the concept name or the concept definition but if the teacher prefers an approach where the introduction of the uh, lesson involves explanation of the concept the name of the concept then of course the teacher has to think of an introduction where she or he is explaining the entire concept in the beginning itself and the conclusion also is going to be very different which we are going to discuss in the course of this particular lecture so first we'll begin with the deductive approach the deductive approach is where the lesson begins with introduction and explanation of the concept as we know that a concept has five aspects to it it has a name to itself it has a definition it has certain characteristics it has some examples and last it has a value to it now if the teacher is following a deductive approach means she or he is going to give the concept name in the beginning of the lesson itself and also maybe the definition 
and the characteristics of the concepts which provide the explanation of the concept. After this, the teacher is going to discuss the various examples of the concepts. And using these examples, she will further clarify the concept. Followed by this, there will be an examination of various examples on the basis of the concept explained. So to check whether the students have understood the explanation of the concept, the teacher may ask the learners to examine various concepts and see whether the characteristics of the concept are applied to these examples which have been given. That means the teacher is trying the learners to apply the concept. And finally, when the students are able to uh, analyze that the characteristics which have been discussed related to the concept are there in the examples, they are able to establish the linkage between the concept and between the examples. Because as we know that concept is a mental entity, it's a mental idea. It exists in our mind, but the examples exist in the real world. So when we are saying that we are establishing a linkage means the idea that the learner has in his or her mind gets a connection to itself through the real life entities because the examples exist in the real world. So when the learner is looking into those examples which are coming from the real world, the learner is able to see the concept and its characteristics in those examples. To further understand the deductive approach, let's look at the teaching of concept of an insect using deductive approach. So suppose a teacher is teaching the concept of insect using the deductive approach, the teacher is going to begin the lesson by naming the concept that is today we are going to discuss about insects. So the name of the concept have, has come in the very beginning of the class. And then she will start explaining that what are those characteristics that make a particular group which is called as insect. So as you can see that the characteristic of the insects would be discussed whether four or five and these characteristics are generally the classifying, concept, uh, classifying characteristics because a concept is made by categorization and classifi classification in science. So these characteristics are the classifying criteria of the insects. And then followed by this, the teacher may use a diagram to explain that how do these characteristics occur in an insect. And the diagram can be of any of the best examples of the insects which are the best representative of this whole group. Now after she has explained all the characteristics using the diagram as well as the various classifying criteria, then she will introduce or he will introduce some of the examples of the insects like for example ladybird or grasshopper or weevil or moth. So she can or he can name different uh, insects. Maybe she can show them the pictures or uh, she can bring some samples of the insects and after presenting the examples she can tell the students to um, analyze whether those characteristics which have been explained are found in the examples of those insects. So if they are able to find those characteristics which shows that they are able to apply the concept of an insect that means that they have understood the concept. And this is how the lesson culminates when the learners are now from the real world they can pick up an organism and they can decide they can categorize this animal into an insect or not an insect because that is based on the various characteristics of the, in, uh, of the insects. And if the learners have understood the characteristics of the insect, that means they are able to apply it into their real life situation. Now coming on to the next approach which is called as the inductive approach. Inductive approach on the other hand begins with an exploration of various examples presented by the teacher. So the teacher is presenting the examples of the concept in the beginning of the lesson itself. After this, the teacher encourages the learner to discover the concept and this discovery is done by again analyzing the examples but this time analyzing the examples to find out which characteristics 
are common amongst all the insects. And those common characteristics then become the classifying criteria for that particular concept. This process engages the learners in constructing the concepts on their own because the teacher is not giving the concept, the teacher is not explaining the concept, the teacher is not giving the definition of the concept. The learner is discovering the characteristics itself and in this process the learner is constructing the concept and the role of the teacher totally converts into a facilitator. The teacher is simply facilitating the process by providing appropriate opportunities such as various examples and sequencing the lesson in such a way that the concept is discovered by the learner itself. Let's take the example of the concept insect again but this time we are doing it with inductive approach. So in this case the teacher begins with the lesson by bringing in examples of insects in the very beginning of the class. So she talks about grasshopper, she talks about weevil, moth, ladybird and while talking and discussing about them maybe she shows them the picture of these insects, examples of these insects or she shows a collection of the insect depending upon the level of the students. So if the students are of 6th or 7th class maybe she can uh, show the sample of collection of insects in the science laboratory and if the children belong to uh, ninth class maybe uh, the pictures of the insects can also help. So by showing the pictures or by showing the collection of insects the teacher encourages the students to compare the characteristics of these insects or these animals and find out which are the common characteristics. So in this process the learners themselves list the various characteristics that are common amongst these examples and these characteristics then can be said or told by the teacher belong to a group of organisms which are referred to as insects. So you can see that after the students have discovered the common characteristics the name of the concept came, comes later. So the teacher can name the concept later and the name of the concept in this case is insect. So without knowing the name of the concept, the learner is made to explore the concept through its characteristics, through the classifying criteria that makes it different from the other group of organisms. And lastly, she may also further extend this activity and encourage the students to classify these insects further into some subgroups on the basis of certain differences that they can see amongst the characteristics. So within the group of insect also they can find that yet there is a diversity, there, is, there are some differences and we can further make subgroups of that also. So as you can see that uh, in the inductive approach, these examples of ladybird, grasshopper, weevil or any other insect come in the beginning which are used to then discover the common characteristics of the insect and develop the idea of a concept like insect. So in this case, a generic idea of what an insect looks like or what should be a diagram of the insect will also come much later because it is only supporting our mental idea of what an insect is or what a concept called insect is. So now we are in a position that we can quickly make a comparison between the two approaches on the basis of certain criteria. Like for example, how does a teacher begin a lesson in a deductive approach and in an inductive approach? So beginning of the lesson uh, through a deductive approach would involve the teacher introducing and explaining the concept whereas in inductive approach it, uh, it involves the teacher presenting the examples or cases or activities depending upon what kind of a concept it is. Learner's role and their engagement in deductive approach, the learner examine the examples, phenomenon, cases related to the concept and discusses the concept directly. So the learner is trying to apply the concept which has been already explained to him or her 
and using that application of the concept the learner is trying to decide whether the giving or organism is an insect or not. Whereas in an inductive approach the learner discovers the concept themselves through analysis of the given examples. So the common characteristics or the classifying criteria of the concept would be discovered by the learner itself and will not be told by the teacher. And the conclusion of the lesson in a deductive approach, what does the conclusion look like? It would be simply establishing linkage between the concept which is a mental entity to the real life situation, how the concept gets applied to a real life situation. Whereas in an inductive approach, the culmination of the lesson would involve the teacher introducing the name of the concept and telling the learners that see what you have just now discovered as some of the common characteristics or classifying criteria of a concept, the name of the concept is this. This is what it is called in science. So taking the ability of learners to discover a particular concept, the teacher develops the concept in the class without naming it in the beginning but names it in the end. And the learner also gets a feeling of accomplishment that he or she has discovered the concept itself. So after going through both the approaches, we conclude that both deductive and inductive approaches are important and essential in science teaching. Just that while deciding about them, we have to see that what are we looking for when we think about role of teachers in the classroom, role of learners in the classroom, and how do we want our lesson to progress, start, and culminate. So it's totally your decision as a teacher to follow any of these approaches. Thank you.